Coming on the FanDuel Highlight right now, here's a quarterback who just recently signed with the Denver Broncos. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend, Mr. John Titwell, to the program. How are you, John? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Sorry, I was a little late. Uh, I was just got out of a meeting, so had to time things up. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I don't have a problem with that, so as long as you're in time, we're good to go. So, um, yes, sir. Exactly, and I got that right. You are a quarterback, correct? C O R N E R. Yes, sir. That's what I, that's what I thought. Okay, so we can get on with the topic. So, um, before we get into like the Denver Broncos and college, so how did you get involved uh, in playing uh, pro football? Did you start out when you were like really young? Yeah, I actually started playing football when I was about eight years old, and then ever since then, you know, it's taken off, and I've just grown to love the game. Like, like, what made you like? Wow, I want to, I want to play football. Like, did you like watch TV? It's like, man, I want to play football. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Uh, as when I was little, I used to watch uh, football all the time with my parents. And, um, I always watched the Broncos, which is crazy. I got to be able to play for them. I used to watch Terrell Davis, and I always told my mom and dad, "Hey, I want to be just like him. I wore number thirty and everything." And I think that was the main thing that really drove me to want to play football at the uh, professional level. Because when I look at your profile, it says that you really did want to uh, play for the Denver Broncos. It's like, hey, the dream come true. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, um, I got the opportunity to come down here for a local pro day um, before I actually they signed me and whatnot. And um, it felt really good to come back home and be able to perform in front of these coaches. And I want to thank them for giving me that opportunity because it was a dream come true. And they're really allowing me to live out my dreams right now. Now, as I'm looking into the uh, to the website right now, I know that Denver Broncos. Yeah, sorry about that. It was like the little uh, video, but anyway, um, as I look into the uh, as a profile right now, it says that the Denver Broncos signed 19 college free agents, and not only that, you were like the first ever three-time All League on the first team selected. Uh, what college did you uh, went to, by the way, if I may ask? I went to the University of Sioux Falls out in South Dakota. Now, is that a, a Division Two, Division Three school? That is a Division Two. Division Two. So, uh, what can you tell me uh, more about Division Two? Because, like, I don't see a lot of Division Two. We do have a Division Two around the Metro Detroit area. So, can you tell me what's it like uh, when, while you was playing Division Two football? Yeah, I mean, uh, we played in the. Um, the NSIC, which is the Northern Sun Conference, and I mean it's a really competitive, competitive league. And not only that, but the whole Division Two, I think, is really competitive. You know, um, I think the major difference between D1 and D2 is probably the size of, of being the skill levels. I think is very similar. Uh, the size is just a little different when you go from D2 to D1. And I mean, it's really. I mean, I had a blast playing for Division Two football. I mean. It's everything that I could imagine it to be, and I think it was compared to a lot of D1 schools as well. Now, uh, is there a lot of is there some like is there a lot of division a big division two schools that you even know of, or it's just like totally different from like division one? Because like when I see a division one school or division one A, usually see like the bigger schools like the Michigan, Ohio, uh, the Ohio Buckeye, Ohio State Buckeyes, the Miami Hurricanes. So, is it is is there a lot of big schools in division two? Yeah, there are. There are actually a lot of big schools. Um, the conferences, like strength-wise, I mean, from past history and whatnot, it's been like the MIAA has really been strong. The NSIC, which I was a part of, has probably been the next strongest. And you have teams like, um, I don't know if you, you may have heard of them or may not have, Northwest Missouri, um, Mankato, Pitt State, Minnesota Duluth, like those type teams, are the, like they have huge teams that are in their conference. And, I mean, they're really good competition as well. John Tidwell on the Sean Stewart Show FanDuel Hotline. Now, as I'm looking to your um, to your uh, career in college, you were a team captain for two straight years. You had 35 tackles, three interceptions, three pass breakups, six passes defended, and a block kick this past uh, season. So tell me how did you feel when you uh, made that accomplishment? I mean, I was actually team captain for three years, but <laughs> that's a little wrong. But, I mean, you know, I couldn't be more happy. And I mean, my teammates were the ones that chose me to be that captain. And, I mean, it was a real big honor to be able to represent our program throughout the years that I was there. And, I, I mean, I wish I would have had a better senior season, you know. 
But I think that I went out there and gave him my all. I did face a little adversity at the beginning of the season with injury, so that that didn't help me out a little bit. But I think overall, I just had I just to say thanks to my teammates for being able to um, give me that opportunity to lead them throughout the whole entire of my career there. And as I'm as I'm looking more to your profile, you have been uh, like uh, been very active in community service, like such as volunteering at the banquet to help feed the needy, reading to elementary students, raising funds to feed the need in Haiti, helping low income individuals separate taxes as part of a uh, volunteer income. How did you get involved in that, or did you always like want to help when you was like growing up? I've always been willing to want to help others. You know, that's one of my big things in my life, and I want to give back to the community and be a part of that big, big thing. And uh, we actually, the University of Sioux Falls, we actually did a couple of those events together. We actually went out to the community and helped serve. And being a part of the, that program has really boosted me and wanted to help out more in the community as well. Wow, unbelievable. So uh, I'm looking, I'm look, like I said, like as, as I'm looking to your profiles, like, wow, this kid's like fantastic. So... Uh, you had like 7.5, uh, you have like 50 passes defended, including 12 interceptions. That's like 13th all time. And the second in Division Two era for 152 yards, six all time at USFF, second in Division Two era, and a touchdown. It's like, wow. How did the uh, Denver Broncos even notice you? Like, did they uh, contact you or did you like, did like uh, practice and they say like, you know what? We may even want to draft this. We want to draft this kid. Yeah, um, I think the first time they probably – they actually came out to our practices um, during our fall this last season, and I think that that's the first time they noticed me. And from there on, I went up to my pro day, and they were there at the my pro day, and they noticed me. And that's when I got that invite, actually, to come down to the local pro day. And ever since I came here, you know, they just fell in love with me. They really liked how I performed and how I held myself and my character. So they asked me to um, – yeah, they were thinking about it, but – Obviously, it didn't happen. So, but I mean, I'd say thank you to them for giving me this opportunity as well. And 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 more likely, you did put your best in all. Then that's how you got drafted by the Broncos. Yes, sir. Now, I know, like, uh, when it comes like the NFL, NBA, you do have to do like a um, a, like a rookie meeting, or like a like like when the uh, like the athletes tell you like how to spend your money, what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. Did you go to that? Uh, what's it called? The uh the rookie seminar. Yes, that's the rookie seminar. Did you well, go to the rookie seminar? Um, that's a little bit later, but we actually right now the Broncos they're taking us through a little bit of that stuff now. We actually got to um, sh they brought a guy in to show us how to financially handle our money, which is pretty sweet to be able to see. And then we also got a a little seminar on basically like league rules and what you can and cannot wear and whatnot. So. But that uh, rookie seminar is a little later in the year here. Because when I thought about the rookie seminar, I thought the rookie seminar uh, happened before the draft. But like, so like the rookie seminar happens after the draft because I thought it was before the draft. Yes, it happens after. It'll be later. I think in the end of June. Okay. Okay, because like yeah. I said, like, I always thought like it happened before like the players got drafted, but now I, now that I know it's like it happens after the draft. Now, now I got that. Yeah, I was thinking it would happen before too, so then you can get that information before people start spending crazy money and whatnot. But yeah, it happens after. Exactly. Now, is there any teammates uh, from college that's also uh, you know of has been signed by Denver Broncos or no? No, not by the Denver Broncos, but um, one of my college teammates, Solomon St. Pierre, is actually trying out at a number of different teams. He just got done trying out with the Minnesota Vikings, and he leaves this weekend to go down to San Diego Chargers as well. Unbelievable. I hope you guys do make it. So, yeah, so uh, like I said, for those who are uh, listening, it is John Tidwell, the cornerback of the Denver Broncos. And I know you're very happy to see Paston Lynch, who got drafted by the Denver Broncos as well, because they are the defending champions. So it looks like you are going to be on your way up, and you're going to be like in the uh, Class A franchise. Yeah, yeah, I am. And it's awesome, awesome opportunity again uh, that the Broncos have given me. And I'm just going out here and competing and learning from the older veterans and willing to take in all the information so I can help um, boost this um, program as well.
Now, when you did you have you ever you saw John Elway? Have you ever saw John Elway uh, in real life? Yes, sir, I have actually. My local pro day, pro day was the first time I seen him in real life, and he's actually always out at the the our rookie little camps here and the practice that we do. He's always out here wandering around, smiling. It's pretty sweet to see him around. Now, when you saw John Elway in real life, what was your reaction? Were you like, oh, my goodness, I'm actually seeing John Elway, the court, the player who used to play for the Denver Broncos. What was your reaction was like that when you first saw him? Yeah, I was really, I was in shock for sure. Being able to see him, he's a legend here, you know, and being able to meet with him and be able to talk to him was just an awe uh, moment for me as well. Because, like, anybody who knows, like, a celebrity, your, your mind is like, is this really true, or am I like really dreaming? Because like, when you like, no matter if it's like an athlete, a celebrity, you're just in that moment. Like, this is the first time I actually seen him in real life. My dream is coming true. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is big, and I mean even with some of the players on the team, you know, being able to see those guys for the first time in person, like keep the league, Chris Harris Jr., yeah, TJ Ward, all these guys, being able to see them in person is pretty amazing as well. So, and now to see that they're my teammates, which is pretty pretty awesome to say. Now, if you did not play cornerback, what position did you would you play? Um, it'd probably probably be nickel or safety. That's interesting. Now, if you did not play in the NFL, what would you be doing right now if you didn't play football? Um, if I didn't play football, I'd probably be studying for my CPA exam, which is to get my certified public accountant to be able to um sit for that so then I can be get a job at a large accounting firm that'd probably be what I'd be doing right now now let's say like you finish like your NFL career now would you go in that field after you uh finish your NFL career yeah I think so for sure for tax season because you know I like helping out people with their taxes and be able to give them some knowledge about how to manage their money a little bit so that they can help themselves down in the future. And I would actually prepare taxes this last January um, for a firm in South Dakota. And, I mean, I loved every second of it, so. Because usually people who come into the NFL, they think about, like, oh, man, I think I'm going to make so much money. But then when they get – when they uh, don't play football no more or no team wants them, they don't have no clue, like, what's their second goal. So all their life is like – I want to play football, screw anything else. So at least you do have a plan or like any other player that I uh, have ever um, no, uh, have ever known. So it looks like after your football career over, it's like you already you already know what you're going to do like after football. So at least you planned it out. So I got to give uh, my props to you. I appreciate that. All right. So uh, John Tidwell of the Sean Stewart Show. Uh, John Tidwell of the Den Broncos on the Sean Stewart Show. Sorry if I mispronounced that. But – now that uh, is May and the preseason begins in August. Okay. Now that somebody just sent me a message, but don't worry about that. But uh, since this is May and preseason don't begin in August, what do you what do you want to accomplish now that you're in the NFL? Um, I really I just want to be able to help out the team in any way that that I can, and if that's special team, if that's being a practice player. Any of the above, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to help this team and this program go to win an, another um, Super Bowl. I think that's my main goal, you know, and be able to learn from the guys that are ahead of me right now, I think will be big. That will be very big. John Tidwell of the Denver Broncos, quarterback of the Denver Broncos on the Sean Stewart Show FanDuel Hotline. Now, where can my listeners find you on social media? What was that, Sorry. I was saying, uh, where can my listeners find you on social media? My listeners find you on social media. Um, I have Facebook, John Tidwell. You can search me there. Uh, my Twitter account is John Tidwell3026. And I, that's all I have for social media. <laughs> all righty, John Tidwell. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And I hope to have you on the future show. And uh, congratulations on being signed with the Broncos. Thank you very much again. Thank you for having me on. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, that was John Tibble on the Shonster Show FanDuel Hotline.